Hey, my name is Jason. I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist, a sleep tech, also a registered sleep technologist through the AASM. And something I get questioned a lot on is central sleep apnea. Um, I get these on my forum at freesleepapadvice.com forward slash forum, as well as in the lab. Um, and so a lot of people wonder, why am I having central sleep apnea all of a sudden? I ask them, why do you think you're having it? And they're like, well, I didn't have them in the lab, but all of a sudden they're showing up uh, when I look at my data on my CPAP machine. So, okay, so I try to educate them. There's several things that could be going on. One is it could actually be central sleep apnea. So if you've had, cent I'm sorry, obstructive apnea for quite a while, then all of a sudden you're put on CPAP, that throws a lot at your system. Um, you have some things in your carotid bodies, uh, you know, in here that detect the amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen in your bloodstream. Um, if you have too much carbon dioxide, it triggers you to breathe. If you have a buildup of oxygen, it tells you not to breathe. Um, so what you'll get is this cycling of, you know, they're a little trigger happy. You've, you've been having obstructive apneas for so long that it's your heart and it, they're trying to coordinate your breathing to get your brain the most oxygen possible. Um, so when that's, when that's off and all of a sudden you're being thrown a lot of air in your upper, it's just, it's different for it. So it's confused <laughs> and, and you're basically going to start having central sleep apnea. Um, some doctors will right away put you on BiPAP. Uh, some will put you on an auto SV unit, which will regulate your breathing breath to breath. Um, other doctors favor just putting you on CPAP for a while. And after about a three week to a month, you'll, you'll self-regulate. It'll figure it out. It won't be so trigger happy. Um, and you'll start uh, falling into a, a breathing pattern that, that normalizes and stabilizes. Um, when it doesn't, you get these huge, you know, you, you stop breathing and you stop trying to breathe because your brain is telling you you have plenty of oxygen. And then all of a sudden it goes, oh crap, you don't have enough oxygen. You have too much CO2. So then it kicks you into breathing too much. Then it goes, oh crap, <laughs> I have too much oxygen again. And then it goes, no, you don't. It's kind of like the air conditioning cycle that it, it goes from way too hot to way too cold to way too hot to way too cold because it can't quite regulate itself. You're basically doing the same thing. Um, one of the other things that's probably even more common is your, your uh, CPAP machine or your APAP machine that you're using, it's simply not as accurate as you would hope. Um, why do I say this? Because I score records all the time and I, I'm pretty familiar with the breathing patterns. Uh, a lot of time when people are moving around, they yawn, they sigh, um, all that stuff comes back and it sure looks like a central apnea unless you have the added bonus of having the um, brainwave electrodes the EEG, and that's a surefire way to tell if someone's asleep or not. So let me show you some examples of those because I don't want you to just, don't, don't believe All me. All right, so here is a good part to show you. This is an online sleep study. Um, what I've done is I've erased, or I've deleted the channels that show you where they're asleep. So I'll go ahead and add those right now. There we go. I'll take it down. So uh, what this is, this is all alpha. It's between eight and 12 cycles per second, which is wake. And that is eyes closed, but awake. So as you can see here, sure looks like a central sleep apnea. Um, so a machine at home will be picking this up, whether it's one of those little home monitoring units or your data capable machine. So I'm gonna put this back. This is gonna two minute window. And you can see here, this person is wide awake. They're even having to saturations with these, which would also fool any type of machine that has symmetry available. So central apnea, but guess what? Doesn't count. Central apnea doesn't count. All this is awake. Just look at the breathing pattern. Um, even this would look like a hypopnea, 5% to saturation, all that stuff, but they are awake. Central apnea, but doesn't count. They're awake. Your machine's gonna be calculating this at night. You're gonna wake up in the morning, look at the data and say, oh my God, why am I even wearing this CPAP? It, it doesn't work. Well, if you think about it, you may remember being up and awake for a period of time. If not, people yawn, people sigh in their sleep. Uh, mouth leaks can cause that kind of stuff. Uh, simple movements. Um, the machines are not as accurate as you would hope. They're pretty good, but um, not great. So here, this is a report of an actual um, let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see it better. So this is a, uh, uh, can't speak all of a sudden. This is a Philips Respironics um, 
system one apap this is a home test and what you can see all these little red blips are pressure pulses and they have they have a ton of them let me zoom out just a tad anytime there's any stoppage of breathing they'll shoot up these pressure pulses anyway what you can see is all these decreases in breathing so we don't know if this person is awake or asleep we don't have the benefit of having the electrodes on the head which tell us what we're seeing over here it's all this breathing central apneas and stuff that sure looks similar to this kind of stuff and this i mean maybe it is real i, I don't know this one is actually legit and it kind of looks like the other one but the brain waves slow enough that it's sleep all this stuff would be hypopneas but again not asleep. Right here, the machine would say, wow, they're sleeping great. But you know what? They're not asleep. You see a theme here? <laughs> not that people don't actually sleep and you get valuable data, but right here, this person is completely awake and breathing just fine. Right here, they even say movement and a sigh. Again, central apnea, nothing. Here's what this looks like on the machine though, if we delete these channels. If you look at that data, it sure looks like something to me. Except that it doesn't, because I know not to trust these machines entirely. And that is a real one, which looks pretty much like the fake one. So the purpose of this video isn't to bash uh, the information that you're getting off of your CPAP machine or, or stress you out. It's actually quite the opposite. Um, if you're seeing a lot of central apneas, you probably don't need to worry about it, especially if you've just been put on it. Uh, when you want to worry about it is when you start seeing them back to back to back to back. And there's a crescendo, decrescendo nature to the, uh, the breathing. It would kind of look like a, a, uh, I don't know, like a slinky. So uh, sometimes those machines will actually tell you, it'll say periodic breathing, um, because it'll, it'll have a range, and I want to say it's 10 minutes. If you have, keep having this pattern, it'll, uh, it'll trigger that. So what it would look like is um, it'd be small, then get bigger, smaller, it may stop, bigger, stop. Kind of like that, it would have that sort of a pattern. Um, if you start seeing that for long periods of time, then you may want to start thinking about it. But, but even then, uh, if your doctor has you on a CPAP trial, um, after a month, if it doesn't go away, then it's probably not going to stabilize and you may need to move to something like a BiPAP or an APAP. So ask your doctor about that. Um, otherwise, you know, don't worry about it. It's probably just movement. It's also probably could be, it could be movement. It could be you just getting used to the machine. Um, so make sure your leaks are low. That's going to help assist it over time. Make sure you're wearing it as much as possible, your CPAP mask. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, FreeCPAPAdvice.com forward slash forum and tell your friends about it. Thanks.